Wally Lutz. Um, and he, um, on, he originally called it the no-brainer. And um, because it was so easy to tie. And uh, then, he, then he changed the name of it and he, it's, uh, he calls it the Tom Bomb now. So this, this you tie on any, any nymph hook, any sort of uh, 2x, 3x long nymph hook. And you can do it on streamer hooks too as well. Uh, this one is a, is a smaller one. But it's way easier to tie and it gives you the same effect and it is very effective on grayling. It's the most effective size for that blind rifle? Um, size 6, 8, 10. So, but we're talking 2 or 3x long hooks. <coughs> but you can tie it. You can tie it much bigger. But usually the grayling I catch are so small that you need a smaller hook. Okay. So, you, you put on your, your thread, you put in a thread loop. Okay, the thread loop is important, you'll see why in a minute. And you have to close the loop as you're supposed to. There. I can use the same hackle. Cut it so there's something for the thread to grab onto. Somebody's watch or clock going off. Oh, is it that? No, no, no. Still working fine. Still working fine? Okay. So, somebody's cell phone. Or something. Watch? Okay. So, what you do, now that you've got your hackle on, what you want is a clump of longish um, elk hair or deer hair. It's got to be pretty long. So I've got this nice green stuff. And you want to start with a pretty big clump because you're going to be losing a fair bit of this. This stuff has is, is got a, a lot of short, feather, short uh, fibers in it and it's also got a lot of um, uh, fuzz. So you're trying to get some of that out. Now Wally doesn't even bother with the fuzz. He just leaves it in there. He says it makes no difference at all. He's tied up a fly with nothing but fuzz, tossed it in a glass of water, and it's still floating two days later. So he says that that fuzz doesn't absorb water, and it's. But he also he, at that time he was also tying commercially, and he was tying, you know, um, not thousands of dozens like AK, but hundreds of dozens. And um, any way he could, he could he could figure out to make it work easier, well, that's what he did. Okay, so I need a stacker because I like my tails nice and even. It's not necessary. Wally doesn't bother with the stacker. He just ties on the tails the way they come. I'm also losing some more fibers in here. These things are probably all in the way, right? Okay. So, there's a few short ones in here. I'll get rid of them. Try to get rid of a little bit of fuzz. Make the tail about not quite the length of the body, three, say three quarters the length of the body. You see what clump, a size clump you got there, Michael? That's a big size. It's a good chunk. It's a big chunk, yeah. And I see one that's uneven, so I'll try to get rid of that. Okay, so three quarters the size, so. Oh, and I've got this. Um, What's your favorite color of that one? I like green. Like green, like this, and natural sort of deer hair color or elk hair color. So, we're going to take one sort of loose wrap, and then what we're going to do is we're going to sort of bunch it around the hook. So, it's not just on top of the hook, but it's around the hook shank and tighten it up. Give it a few wraps. Okay, so that part 
is ready. And my tail's a little sh shorter, but that's okay. It'll work. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to spiral it forward until you reach the hook eye. And of course, it's all covered with hair, so you have to sort of guess where it is. When you get to where you think it is, which I think I've got, you do that. So you're making that sort of a body. You're going to take this part here, and move it all up to the top of the hook shank, like that, and post it. So you're wrapping right around the, the elk hair. Okay, how long, uh, the, the head of this is, is looking an awful lot like um, Tom Tom, yeah. So you have, your, you have your choice. Do you want to leave it this long, you know, as long as this hair is, or do you want to leave it shorter? I like it a little shorter, so about like that. That's the head. Now, then, what you want to do is you want to take this thread loop. You remember the thread loop from the beginning? And I want to open it up and I want to grab the hackle, sort of wrap the hack, get that hackle in there and find my hackle pliers. Grab it all together. Okay. And spin it so that you've got a sort of a spun hackle. Can you see how that's spun like that? Now the reason why you do that is be, Wally found that if you just uh, wrap the hackle ar around it in the, the normal plane, what you, would, what you would find is that it would t tend to spin the whole fly. It would act as a little aerofoil. It would spin the whole fly. So then he, then he experimented with hackling to the front and then, ha and then putting reverse hackle to the rear. And then he came up with this method, which is just basically to make sure the hackle fibers don't stick out in any one particular direction by spinning them. So, a couple wraps at the rear, and then you just sort of follow your, um, your spiral wraps, oops, don't let go, spiral wraps forward. Okay, and the hackle goes all over the place. Oh well. Hopefully by the time you reach here, it's more or less, the head is still more or less on top of the hook. And wrap it off. Mm -hmm. What do you think that represents? Stonefly, hopper, um, big something. I swear, we were fishing the, the Little Smoky once. Wally was using these. I was using my regular dry fly patterns and things. He was getting hit after hit. Every cast, there was a hit. They, would, they just loved this. And you can, you can fish it dead drift, you can skate it, you can drag it underwater, and the grayling was just going wild for it. In those sizes, Michael? Yep. And, and yeah, and you'd catch like small grayling with it. <clears throat> They'd go right after it. This size is a small one? Uh, size 10, size 10 uh, nympho. So that's sort of a smallish one. Whip finish. <coughs> Stick a little head cement on the, on the th thread wraps there, and you're done. Now, compare the time it takes to tie one of these, bom one of these bom big bombers with that spinning and cutting and, and all the rest of that and to the time that you spend tying one, one of those. This is my preferred pattern, the Tom Bomb. And the flotation is just as good? Hmm? The flotation is just oh, as good? I think it's just as good, yeah. Okay, Michael, let's take five minutes for the 50-50. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Is there, uh, is there any benefit to reducing the size of the 